Hello! Welcome to the Biochemistry Packet Lecture on the Ionic Properties of Amino Acids. By the way, this channel aims to make biochemistry easy to understand by uploading lecture and explanatory videos, live stream reviews, and study tips. In this video, we are going to discuss the amphoteric property of amino acids, the pKa of the different ionizable groups, and of course, explain the different ionization behaviors of the neutral, acidic, and basic amino acids. Before we go into the ionic properties of amino acids, it is worthwhile to revisit the Bronsted lowry theory of acids and bases. According to this theory, an acid is a substance that can release a proton and a base is a substance that can accept a proton. Therefore, H is a Bronsted lowry acid, one that donates a proton, while B is a Bronsted lowry base, the moiety that accepts a proton. Also, a negative is called the conjugate base of the acid HA and HB positive is called the conjugate acid of the base B. To reiterate, what we can say is that a bronsted lowry acid is a proton or hydrogen ion donor, and a bronsted lowry base is a proton or hydrogen ion acceptor. All 20 amino acids can act as bronsted acids and bronsted bases. This is the reason why they are also called their amphoteric electrolytes or ampholytes. Ampholytes are substances that can either donate a proton making it a bronsted acid, or accept a proton, making the same substance a bronsted base. Going back to the concept of acids and bases, acids are compounds that give protons on dissociation. Bases, on the other hand, are compounds that accept protons. The proton or hydrogen ion concentration is quantitatively expressed as pH or parts hydrogen. It is defined as a negative logarithm of a proton or hydrogen ion concentration. The pH scale extends from 1 to 14 which corresponds to hydrogen ion concentration 1 mole to 1 times 10 to the power of minus 14 moles. The pH 7.0 represents neutrality but not necessarily the physiologic pH which is around 7.4. pH values less than 7 represents acidic solution and pH values above 7 refer to bases or alkalinity. All amino acids have at least two ionizable groups. First, all amino acids have the carboxyl group. As an acid it dissociates to carboxyl or COO negative, the dissociation constant or the pK of the alpha carboxyl group is around 2.0. On the other hand, the amino group, as a bronsted base, is protonated to become an H3 positive. The dissociation constant or the pK of the alpha amino group is around 9.0. At neutral pH, both groups are ionized. That is, the carboxyl group exists in the dissociated form or COO negative while the amino group exists in a protonated form and H3 positive. This will form a doubly charged molecule of amino acid containing positive and negative charges. This is called switerion, a doubly charged ionic molecule but is electrically neutral. If subjected to an electrical field as in the process of electrophoresis, it does not move since it is electrically neutral and will not migrate to either the cathode or anode poles. But once the amino acid is positively charged or is cationic, it will migrate to the cathode or the negatively charged pole. Consequently, an amino acid having the charge of negative or anionic will migrate towards the anode or the positively charged pole. Let us remember this very important concept. The charge of the functional groups of each amino acid, either the carboxyl group or the amino group, will depend on the overall pH of the solution they are in. In other words, the overall charge of an amino acid will be dependent on and will be changed depending on the pH of its surroundings. In conditions where there are high hydrogen ion concentrations and the pH is low, the carboxyl or COOH group remains undissociated. When the pH is increased or the hydrogen ion concentration decreases, the proton from the COOH is lost and the carboxyl group becomes dissociated and becomes carboxylate with a negative charge. Once a pH is reached when the concentrations of the carboxyl group or COOH, which is the acid, and the carboxylate or COO negative or conjugate base is equal. According to the henderson hesselbalch equation, the pH is equal to the pK of that ionic group. This is the pK of value of the acidic group, the carboxyl group. pK is defined as the negative log of the acid dissociation constant, or K of value. The pK of value is one method used to indicate the strength of an acid. So in this case, with the two ionic species in equal concentration, the pH is equal to the pKa. Thus, the first pK value, or pK1, and we can say that we have equal concentrations of both the carboxyl and carboxylic groups. Similarly, if the pH is further increased to above neutral pH, 
The protonated amino group, or NH3 positive, has no recourse but to give away its proton or hydrogen ion and becomes the unprotonated amino group, or NH2. If the pH is further increased by withdrawing hydrogen ions from the solution, there will be a point when there will be equal parts of the protonated amino group, the ammonium plus 1 and the unprotonated amino group, NH2. And going by the principle stated by the henderson hasselbalch equation, this pH will now be equated to the pK of the amino group. Therefore, a neutral amino acid, that is, an amino acid without any ionizable R or side group, has two pK values corresponding to the two ionizable groups, the carboxyl and amino groups. We have learned that there are 13 amino acids that are neutral. All these 13 amino acids will thus have only two pK of values. pK of values indicate strengths of each group. The lower the pK of value, the more acidic that ionizable group is. Consequently, it will also mean that the group will also be less basic. Likewise, ionizable groups with high pK of values are more basic and less acidic. At low acidic pH or high hydrogen ion concentration, amino acids will be cationic. On the other hand, at high pH or low hydrogen ion concentration, the amino acid will be an anion. When the amino acid exists in a particular pH when both the carboxyl and amino groups are ionized and protonated, respectively, then the amino acid exists as a sweeterion. Again, we learned that a sweeter ion is a doubly charged species that has a total charge of zero. The pH where the sweeterian form of the amino acid exists is known as the isoelectric pH or pH. The isoelectric point is defined as the pH at which no net migration takes place in an electric field since there is no net charge on the molecule. For neutral amino acids, the isoelectric pH will be equal to the average of the two pK of values for that amino acid. Let us now look at the buffering action of amino acids. Buffers are important since we know that they cushion short-term pH changes in the organism by resisting change in pH when an acid or alkali is added. Buffers are mixtures of a weak acid with its conjugate base or of a weak base with its conjugate acid. Amino acids are ampholytes and thus they act as buffers. The titration curve shown here shows that buffer systems are most effective at the pH values that correspond to the pK of value of the ionizable group like the carboxyl or amino groups. Seven of the 20 amino acids are trifunctional and thus have side chain groups that are also readily ionizable. This means that at certain pH values, these ionizable side chain groups are also capable of exchanging hydrogen atoms or protons. In other words, these side groups can donate and accept hydrogen atoms and become ions. This additional functional group gives them the ability not only to participate in acid-base reactions, but to also form ionic bonds intramolecularly and intermolecularly. What are these seven amino acids? We have the two strongly acidic amino acids, aspartic acid and glutamic acid, with its alpha carboxyl and gamma carboxyl as additional functional groups, respectively. We also have the weaker acidic amino acids, cysteine with its sulfhydryl group and tyrosine with its phenolic hydroxyl group. The basic amino acids complete the group of seven trifunctional amino acids. These are arginine, with its guanidinium group as the most basic amino acid, lysine with its additional functional group, epsilon amino group, and the least basic, histidine with its imidazole group. Aside from this third ionizable side chain groups found on these seven amino acids, each of these amino acids contains an ionizable alpha carboxyl group and ionizable alpha amino group. Thus, they are labeled as trifunctional amino acids, each of them having three ionizable functional groups. From the table shown here, we can see the ionization state of the functional group existing in acidic or basic conditions. Or to be exact, their ionization states below or above their specific pKa. On the left side, in conditions when the pH of the solution is below the pKa of the functional group, we have the acid, with the carboxyl group being undissociated or still in the carboxylic acid or COOH form. Or if it is a base, like histidine, arginine, and lysine, with the amino group being protonated and thus in the cationic form. On the right side, or in conditions when the pH of the solution is above the group's pKa, on the other hand, we can see the dissociated form of carboxylate, or the COO negative ionized form for aspartate and glutamate, and the dissociated sulfhydryl for cysteine and dissociated phenylhydroxyl for tyrosine. We can also see that the additional amino groups for the amino acids arginine and lysine are not protonated and thus carry no charge. This holds true as well for the weakest base, histidine, wherein the imidazole group is not protonated as well and carries no positive charge. Let us now look at the ionization behavior of trifunctional amino acids. Let us start with the acidic amino acids with aspartic acid as our example. Aspartic acid is a trifunctional amino acid 
meaning it has three functional groups, each with their specific dissociation constants and pKa values. To add, with three functional groups, we can deduce that aspartic acid will not only have three ionic species with different charges but four. On the left of both the chemical reaction and the titration curve, we can see that aspartic acid is in a very acidic solution at a pH below 1. As we move from left to right across the x-axis, we are increasing the pH of the solution by increasing the hydroxide concentration and decreasing the hydrogen ion concentration. Please note that aspartic acid loses protons as one moves from left to right. Let us look at the different ionization states of aspartic acid's three functional groups as we move from the most acidic to the most basic. As we titrate by adding hydroxide ions, at point 1, the most acidic, close to pH 1, or at any pH below the pKa value of the alpha carboxyl group, we know that the hydrogen ion concentration is high, and thus no acidic carboxyl groups need to dissociate. They stay as carboxyl acid COOH. So we have the following moieties, alpha carboxyl and beta carboxyl groups remain undissociated as COOH and both neutral. And the amino group, the alpha amino group is protonated as NH3 with a charge of positive 1. Thus, the overall charge of aspartic acid at this pH is positive 1. As we move to the right, increasing the pH above the, the first pKa, we can see that it is the most acidic functional group, the alpha carboxyl group, that will first dissociate, becoming carboxylate or COO negative. So we have the following ionization states of the functional groups. Alpha carboxyl is dissociated with a negative 1 charge. The beta carboxyl group remains undissociated with a charge of 0, and the alpha amino protonated as NH3 with a charge of positive 1. The overall charge of aspartic acid at this pH is 0 or neutral. This is the switerionic form of aspartate. Adding more hydroxide ions further increasing the pH above the pKa of the beta carboxyl group, we can see that the second most acidic functional group, the beta carboxyl group, will then dissociate, becoming carboxylate or COO negative. So we have the following ionization states of the functional groups. Both alpha and beta carboxyl groups have dissociated with negative 1 charges, but the alpha amino group remains protonated as NH3 with a charge of positive 1. The overall charge of aspartic acid at this pH is negative or minus 1. And lastly, making the solution very basic with a paucity of hydrogen ions with a pH above the pKa of the alpha amino group. The least acidic and most basic functional group will now have to deprotonate and revert to an unprotonated NH2 form carrying a neutral charge, with both carboxyl groups carrying negative charges and the amino group with zero charge, the overall charge of the amino acid is negative 2. Going back to the titration curve of aspartic acid, we can see here now that we have three pKa values, each corresponding to the pKa values of the three functional groups. pKa1 for the alpha carboxyl group, pKa2 for the beta carboxyl group, and pKa3 for the alpha amino group. As we can observe here, it is the regions of the pKa where we have equal concentrations of both ionic species on each side thus having the greatest buffering capacity range. This is manifested by the plateauing of the curve in these regions. For acidic amino acids, the isoelectric pH or the pI can be computed by getting the averages of the pKa values of the most acidic functional groups. In this case, the isoelectric pH of aspartic acid is the average or mean of the first two pKa values or this formula. Let us now look at a representative basic amino acid, lysine. Just like aspartic acid, lysine is a trifunctional amino acid with a third functional group, the epsilon amino group as we will see later. Just like the titration of aspartic acid with hydroxide ions, as we move on with the titration, we are increasing the pH and decreasing the hydrogen ion concentration of the solution. As such, the most acidic functional groups dissociate or give away their protons first. In lysine's case, it will be the alpha carboxyl group, followed by the alpha amino group, and the last group which is the least acidic or the most basic, the epsilon amino group having a pKa value of around 10.5. Please note that lysine loses protons as one moves from left to right. Let us look at ionization states of lysine's three functional groups as we move from the most acidic to the most basic, as we titrate by adding hydroxide ions. At point 1, the most acidic, close to pH 1, or at any pH below the pKa value of the alpha carboxyl group, we know that the hydrogen ion concentration is high, and thus no acidic carboxyl group need to dissociate. They stay as carboxyl acid COOH. So we have the following moieties, alpha carboxyl group remain undissociated as COOH and neutral. And both alpha and epsilon amino groups of lysine, 
being basic, will remain protonated as NH3 with charges of positive 1. The overall charge of lysine at this pH is positive 2. As we move to the right, increasing the pH above the first pKa, we can see that it is the most acidic functional group, the alpha carboxyl group, that will first dissociate, becoming carboxylate or COO negative. So we have the following ionization states of the functional groups. Alpha carboxyl is dissociated with a negative 1 charge, and both alpha and epsilon amino groups of lysine, being basic, will still remain protonated as NH3 with the charges of positive 1. The overall charge of lysine at this pH is positive 1, adding more hydroxide ions further increasing the pH above the pKa of the alpha amino group. We can see that the least basic or more acidic of the amino groups. The alpha amino group will then deprotonate or lose its proton, becoming amino NH2 with a zero or neutral charge. So we have the following ionization states of the functional groups. Alpha carboxyl group has dissociated with a negative one charge. The alpha amino group deprotonated as amino or NH2 with a neutral or zero, and the epsilon amino group being very basic, remaining protonated as NH3 positive. The overall charge of lysine at this pH is zero or neutral. This is the switerionic form of lysine. And finally, making the solution very basic with very low levels of hydrogen ions with a pH above the pK of the epsilon amino group. This group will now have to deprotonate and revert to an unprotonated NH2 form carrying a neutral charge. These are the ionization states of the functional groups of lysine at this pH, alpha carboxyl group dissociated with a negative 1 charge and both alpha and epsilon amino groups to protonated carrying no charges. The overall charge of lysine at this point is negative 1. Revisiting the titration curve of lysine, we see that we have three pKa values, each corresponding to the pKa values of the three functional groups. pKa1 for the alpha carboxyl group, pKa2 for the alpha amino group, and pKa3 for the epsilon amino group. To reiterate, the points in the curve where we have equal concentrations of both ionic species on each side is the functional group's pKa. These points will exhibit the greatest buffering capacity range. We can see this by the plateauing of the curve in these regions. For basic amino acids, the isoelectric pH or the pI can be computed by getting the averages of the pKa values of the most basic functional groups. In this case, the isoelectric pH of lysine is the average or mean of the last two pKa values. Thank you for watching this episode for this playlist. Check out the other videos in this playlist and please do subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified of new video episodes that will be uploaded regularly.